in some reason. So um, we were sitting in this pile of measurements uh, that were originated in many countries. They had many countries as their destination. And we asked ourselves, what uh, could we do to find any hidden patterns, things that we couldn't see in plain sight? Um, so we thought, OK, this type of, this type of uh, data, it's very suitable to build a graph, a graph that having uh, many nodes and uh, many edges connecting the graph, where the nodes would be countries and the edges would be the latency values we have measured so far. So um, we, we built a graph and uh, we thought, well, what's the best, the best strategy to um, find these hidden patterns? So what we did was choosing an algorithm that will help us find uh, these relationships. Uh, it's the kind of algorithm that is used in social networking, like Facebook, where your nodes are people and your edges are friendships or relationships. Uh, and you get to explore these communities uh, behind our plain data. Um, so um, what we would get as a result uh, is what we call the clusters. It's just the group of nodes or groups of countries that are uh, better connected between them than to the rest of the region. Let's say groups of country which are very close together. So when we applied this algorithm in our Africa graph, we put everything on a map and this is how it showed like. Um, at the beginning, uh, we, okay, we saw it was, uh, they had a very geographical, strong geographical component, which was, uh, predictable uh, as close countries tend to have good connectivity between them. Between them, But we started to ask uh, further questions, uh, some examples of countries that are surrounded by another cluster, let's say another community. Uh, for example, Niger or Madagascar, uh, they, are, uh, they belong to one cluster, but they are actually surrounded by countries who belong to another cluster. Um, we couldn't get the, the root cause for each case uh, which, which uh, led to a country to be uh, in that cluster. But the good thing is that by clustering all this data, we could uh, pinpoint these uh, cases that were not predictable at all. Uh, they're not anomalies, but there are, yes, uh, probably some uh, subject of study in the future. Uh, we'd love like people, network operators, or people uh, who have knowledge about the underlying topologies, the underlying uh, submarine cables or satellite links, uh, people who know how business is done in those countries, which networks are you, are, is your traffic going to, uh, all, that of, all that kind of local information we'd love to have feedback about because uh, we can't go into specific, into every, every uh, situation. One more thing. Uh, we started thinking about is uh, if there's a cultural component driving the driving the clusters because um, language might be a, a common ground for certain uh, operators to get a, to build their relationships but it also might be a barrier so we have a kind of open question if, if is this uh, kind of splitting Africa in different clusters or not so the result we got is um, it has a lot of input from the geography, the networks, the cables, and the people. And as Samrish told, told you um, a while ago, uh, we did this study in Latin America as well. So uh, we thought about putting uh, both results together and to see if there was uh, something in common get to explore and fiddle a bit about with the data. So they have some things in common. Well, they're, the both outcomes show that four clusters re region, three of the clusters are very well defined in both cases. And there's also a not as well defined cluster for 
uh, in each in each case. And uh, there's also this, uh, as I told you, the submarine how submarine cables uh, might be uh, driving the clustering uh, in Latin America. For example, you have lots of Atlantic. Uh, uh, cables and some Pacific cables. It might be the same case in Africa with the southeastern uh, cluster and probably the northern cluster. So, in terms of latency, um, we put uh, both maps with the same uh, color scale, and despite the 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 big difference, uh, Africa has. Uh, more latency, but also has uh, many more countries, which makes, uh, and they're bigger countries. You see how South America has lots of countries concentrated in the Caribbean, uh, which uh, if you get to think about it, countries are much nearer between them than in Africa. Uh, also, if you consider that uh, the study covers 57 uh, countries, uh, that's a lot of combinations to go from one country to another one, which are much less in Latin America. So, uh, a little bit to start wrapping up, uh, connecting with what Amrish said at the beginning, Mauritius looks to have a very good in-country latency, but as you get, you start doing things outside of the island, the, the performance starts to downgrade quite considerably. And uh, then the, the cluster analysis we could, we could do just uh, could give us some, some insight that there are four regions. Uh, there's one small cluster uh, with Benin and Togo, and there's another one which is uh, not very well defined. But we can see that there's, that there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, the good thing is uh, the data is here, the data is here, we'd love to have feedback from people uh, knowing uh, specific things from a certain country, is do things that we cannot get, uh, that we just don't know. So we still have some work to do. Uh, Let's say this was like a snapshot of the region in these two months, uh, but we'd love to we'd love to cross this data with things like uh, uh, infrastructure, specifically the submarine cables and the satellite links, uh, with with uh, relationships between networks and uh, the the presence or not of IXPs in the in the African region. I think this is a very good thing. To, to see how uh, the investment in the region uh, gets seen from our, our latency, latency measurements. We hope that, we hope this map uh, gets uh, much lighter as traffic is, is uh, kept local instead of uh, going to Europe and, and going back to Africa. Some final notes, uh, we've been running this for two months, getting 101,000 measurements. It's everything that's available, publicly available. Uh, we've, uh, we've used Mozilla and Maxmind for geolocation, and uh, we use the speed checker platform to do our ICMP pings. And that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, please, Stand to the microphone or have a chat with us in the, in the corridor. We'll be around. Thank you. Padma from Huawei. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, I do have a question. I'm guessing you're curious and you're trying to do a trace route on some of those to find out. So I'm curious to know, is it hop by hop latency? Is it spread? Or do you feel that there are some special, almost single point of failure, which is influencing the whole trace route? Um, latency. Okay. Uh, the question is: Is is all this are all these things going through a central point? Yeah. What I want to know is: It's spread all over. Let's say you had ten hops, and each ten hop actually took 12, 12 milliseconds. So by the time it's one hundred and twenty, or is it some of them particularly are taking more time? 
Did you, mm, did you have any? We, we haven't done a hop by hop uh, analysis. Yeah, do you think there are any trace routes? Because you could have seen. Uh, we, we'd love to do it, but we can't okay. give an answer right now. Yeah, because that's why I, I was wondering whether you had a look at this or not. Not mm. yet. Maybe. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation, it was really cool. Um, so that, that comment just spurred one thought. Uh, the stats you were showing per country, I, I guess, were like the averages of the results you were taking at those points. Is, I, I can the, imagine. The map. <laughs> um, so from a given vantage point to another vantage point, did mm -hmm. you see much uh, diversity? Was there much variance in those samples? And maybe to answer this question, you could actually look at covariance between different vantage points to see if actually you see sudden spikes in delay at the same time for two perhaps different mm -hmm. countries. And that might reveal that somewhere there's a dependency on maybe a mm -hmm. ISP or a route that they're proposing. So, something we've done is uh, not compare different vantage points in a time series, but get a, a histogram. Uh, so what we see is uh, there's usually more than one mode in the histogram. So you, if you get 200 milliseconds, it's not 200 uh, straight. It's like one is a little bit under and one is a little bit above. That might be related with asymmetrical traffic or stuff like that. But yes, we, we can have a, uh, an in-depth uh, study of how different vantage points behave in time. Cool. Uh, let's, that's Great. Great. Great talk. We can also eventually share the paper we have written on this uh, once it's accepted or rejected, I hope not, <laughs> by the Passive and Active Measurement Conference.